Hello my beautiful friends, welcome back to Dainty Gifts School of Decor and Decoupage. In today's episode of Craft With Me, we're going to redecorate a glass jar. So I found this glass jar in my local charity shop and I have an idea of what we're going to do with this jar. It's going to be a little bit different to what I've done to jars so far and my plan is to do some decoupage in the middle, leave some glass here and there and then also apply some molds over this glass but without painting it. So we'll see how that goes. I have never applied molds directly onto glass without painting it <laughs> so I don't know how that's gonna go. I've done a piece where I've applied a lot of clay over unprimed glass before and that held on pretty well so I'm curious to see how this one is going to work out. But yeah, I hope that you will find this video enjoyable to watch. I hope that you're gonna learn something new today and maybe this will inspire you to get one of these out yourself. A lot of people have these at home and not necessarily glass. You could still do the same thing to plastic really because I know a lot of like sweets come in these kind of jars but plastic jars. Um, and uh, yeah, grab a cup of coffee or tea. I don't have anything today because I figured, well, what's the point? It's gonna go cold anyways. So yeah, grab a cup of tea or coffee and take a walk with me. Let's get started. Okay, so this is the jar and these are the printouts that we're going to use for this jar. So the plan that I have at the moment is to paint kind of a thick strip here in the middle of the jar and then this is where we're going to apply our decoupage pictures onto. I'm going to cut each of these individually, not all of them, but I'm going to pick, you know, some of them to put on here, kind of to go all the way around. And then we're going to do some molds on either side of the strip. And then we're going to do some molds on the top of the lid. I think some of these floral uh, molds from Redesign with Prima's Delicate Florals mold, because it's definitely up there on my favorites list. And yeah, so that is the plan that I have at the moment. I don't know how exactly this is gonna go uh, because I've never done a jar in this kind of way and especially I've never applied molds onto not painted glass or not primed glass. So we'll see how that goes. But I have applied clay onto a jar, kind of covered the whole jar in clay without priming or anything like that. And that worked out absolutely fine. So. I don't see why this shouldn't, but you know, we'll see. Let me tell you a little bit about this printout. So this is a printout from Digital Collage Club. There's going to be a link in the description of this video for this particular printout and also links to where you can get the membership with the club if you're interested. I also have some discount codes in the description as well if you're interested. I actually got this printed out ages ago, but I haven't had the chance to use it. I haven't had the perfect piece to use it on. And now I think I finally found it. I got this printed at my local printing shop. Um, so this was done on a laser printer and this is just normal office paper. And yeah, I think that's all of the info that I need to give you right now. So let's get started. First, we need to degrease the surface. So I've already washed this jar in soapy water and dried it. And now I'm going to use some methylated spirit, which is this stuff. And it says here for cleaning glassware, I like to use it as a degreaser for my glass and metal and all sorts like that. So I'm going to remove this lid and I'm going to give this whole thing a good rub down. I've got my masking tape. We're going to use that to mark out a clean edge. And now I'm going to put one of these out so that I can properly press it against my jar and see exactly how much space I'm going to need to cover. So I'm definitely going to use this chamomile image because the plan for this jar at the moment is for me to use it to keep my um, herbal tea bags inside of it. I especially like to drink chamomile tea um, on an evening, you know, sometimes. And I should really do it more often because it's much better for me than coffee. Not sure if it would be better to do it off center and leave a little bit more space from either the bottom or the top. Um, like so, or to do it in the middle and then have kind of more or less equal space um, on either side of the label. I think I'm going to go for sticking these in the middle and then just 
having molded borders go literally almost right on the edge of these labels. So let's get the masking tape out. I'm going to have to stand up for this one. Alright, so here we go. So I've marked out my line that I'm going to paint. And I am going to use... It's difficult because there's different options for me to like the way to go about this. I could use acrylic paint, I could paint it on, I could dab it on, I could use a primer, all sorts of things that can be used. And each and every one of them has its own pros and cons. And it's kind of deciding which one um, to go with. I think I'm just going to go with acrylic paint because I really can't be bothered to wait for the difficult surface primer to dry for 24 hours and I'm going to dab it on with a sponge. As always I get some paint out. Completely forgot that I did not put my other light on. So sorry about that. Hope this is better for you now. Um, this paint that I'm using is acrylic paint in titanium white by Daily Art. So any other acrylic or chalk paint will be fine. And so I've got a dish sponge and I pick up some paint and I'm gonna dab it onto my jar. Not trying to get a super thick layer straight away, um, you know, get it all covered really really well because I think that if you apply thinner coats but more of them you get a nicer, more even finish. Okay, so I've applied one coat now and I'm going to get my hair dryer out, get this dry and apply another two or three coats of paint over the top and kind of dry them in between and I will see you when this is all painted. So this is what we're looking at after about three or four coats of paint. So I'm now going to take the masking tape off and let's see what's going to happen. Let's see what's going on under there. This is a nice clean line. I like it. I like it a lot. This one's not so clean here, but it's okay. Because I don't have any more time to do anything tonight, because it is already um, past midnight and it's way past my bedtime, I should really be in bed already. I'm gonna leave this to dry overnight, or more like until the next evening, when I can carry on working on this. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do the decoupage and mold and stuff. Well, hello, and it's been like two days instead of 24 hours but um, you know it is what it is so I am ready to decoupage my little papers onto my jar I already cut out the designs that I wanted and I think I'm gonna apply eight of them onto the jar so I'm gonna try and space them out as evenly as I can so let's go ahead and decoupage them on so I've got my plastic file here that I'm gonna use um, to wet my papers on and the way that I usually do it is I stick them either on my table or on a plastic sheet like this and I spray them with water and depending on the thickness of the paper I will let them either sit for a little bit but since these are laser printouts I dab the water away pretty much straight away um, because I don't want the paper to kind of start disintegrating before I've done anything with it. And then I'm going to use Mod Podge. So I've got my brush and I apply a coat of Mod Podge into the space where I want my printout to go. And then I take the paper and just stick it on. And then put it on and then use 
a cloth to kind of dab it down again. I dabbed it down, it's on, and now I apply another coat of Mod Podge over the top, just like so. And so to try and get it um, spaced out nice and even, I'm gonna do I'm gonna decoupage the opposite side now. So I'm gonna try and eyeball it and line it up as best as I can. Round about there. And again, apply a coat of Mod Podge over the top. This is one of those things where if you're into maths and you like using rulers or measuring tapes, you're welcome to go ahead and actually measure out the exact spaces that you're going to have to use. But I'm just, I'm just not that kind of person. It's not me. Here we are, I've gone around the whole jar and applied all eight of my decoupage pictures. They're not perfectly straight, they're not perfectly even, that's absolutely fine, I don't really care about that kind of stuff. It's not exactly like one of the pictures is like down here and the other one is down there. Um, they might be a little bit wonky but uh, I'm all about that kind of stuff. So the next thing that we're going to do is apply moulds around the edges and onto the lid. So I think we'll do the lid first while the glue on this kind of sets a little bit. Let me get the mould out. Okie dokie, so I've got my mould out. So these are the moulds that I'm planning to use at the moment. We'll see what happens. So this first one is a simple rope mould. This is for icing or cake decor. I just bought this on eBay. I can't even remember what I tacked in, but I will link this in the description below for you so you can have a look. You know, even if you live in a different country, some of the um, wording in the description or in the title might give you some ideas for where you can, um, for how to search for something like that in your country, wherever you are. Either way, this is definitely one of my most used molds that I have. First of all, I like the designs on all of these, but also they are really small, so as you guys know, I like to use Redesign with Prima molds. I think they're great quality. And I have two of Redesign with Prima border molds, where it's just molds with different kind of borders, like this, or ropes. But they're all really big and thick. When you're working on something small like this, if I was to stick like a really thick rope around here, I mean it could still work, but um, something a little bit more delicate is going to do much better. Then I have this mould, which is my latest addition in the collection. Um, this is a fleur-de-lis mould, and I don't think we're going to be using any of these more fancier fleur-de-lis, but I thought that these three moulds might look good, kind of either on the bottom or on the top here um, in a couple of places, but we'll see what happens. So we might not use this one. And then this one, Delicate Florals, definitely my most used redesign with Prima mold. Um, and this is what's going to go on the lid. I've got Das air drying clay. Any kind of air drying clay is going to do just fine for this, um, as long as you can get it out of your mold. If you're struggling to get things out of your mold, you can use talcum powder, baby powder. Some people use cooking oil. Um, other things to get your clay out of your moulds, it could help. Um, a lot of people say that oil helps. Uh, I personally haven't tried it, but to be perfectly honest, I don't really need it because I don't usually struggle to get the clay out of the moulds, but if you do, then here's something that you can try. Um, my palette knife. So as you can see, I've just stuck the clay into the mould. Um, we'll try this. I guess we're trying out this shape at the moment. And I cut the excess off and I again shape the clay because cutting it off kind of lifts the fibres and everything and lifts the clay out a little bit. So I just kind of stick it back in and then I push from the bottom and I get the mould out. And 
I'm not going to glue them down just yet. First I'm going to make all of my molds and kind of decide where they're going to go and then we're going to glue them all at once. We'll try a few different designs. Again, same thing. I cut it off, reshape the clay, make sure that there's enough clay in in your mold because sometimes when you cut it off like that, especially on wider or bigger molds, um, if your palette knife moves a little bit, you can like cut clay out from inside of it and then you end up with like a dip in the clay. So just make sure that there's enough clay and then you kind of lift it up and place it where you want it to go. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing over and over again, alternating between these little ornaments until I'm happy with the design and the amount of molds that I have. Okay, so I've applied all of the molds that I want to onto the lid and now I'm going to glue them on. What I'm going to use for glue is trade grade PVA glue, so this is from a hardware store rather than from, you know, a, any normal shop. This is not school PVA, this is carpenter's glue. Technically you could use any kind of glue when you're gluing down um, wet clay, but in this instance, uh, since I'm gluing down clay onto unprimed glass, I have not painted it, I have not done anything to it other than give it a clean, I would definitely suggest that if you do something like this, make sure you use a nice strong glue. So I'm going to simply remove the moulds one by one, apply glue onto them, and then replace them back into the spot where I want them to go. Make sure you don't apply too much glue because this glue takes ages to dry and um, since it's a slippery surface um, it could just simply slide away. So just like this one by one I'm gonna apply them back onto the surface. And you definitely want your clay to be still wet if you're doing something like this on a curved surface and you want your molds to be bendable um, then you definitely need to apply your mold while the clay is still wet because as soon as the clay dries it becomes uh, very stiff and you can't do anything with it you can't mold it or shape it I'm not too worried about kind of glue splattering onto the glass and stuff because this glue dries transparent so it shouldn't matter too much alright I've glued them all on so now I'm gonna set this to the side and move on to the actual jar itself. So I'm going to take some more clay and my icing mould and I'm going to make some ropes to go around the edges of my painted parts. So again, I take my clay and make a little sausage and decide which mould I'm going to go for. <laughs> and I think I'm actually going to go for this thinnest one here. I really don't want the ropes to be like super in your face. I want something nice and delicate, so that's what I'm going to go for. See, I've cut out a little bit too much clay out of this corner here, so I've got a tiny piece of clay in my hand right now, and I just stuff it in here and kind of patch it up. And then take it out. With these rope molds I find that it's easier to get the clay out when I turn it over and I kind of I can then properly roll it up and the clay just kind of falls out by itself almost. Have a look. Yeah I think it's gonna look pretty good this way. So I'm gonna make a few of them so that there's enough to go around both the uh, top and the bottom and then we're gonna and then we'll glue them. All right, so I've made six ropes and now it's time to glue them on. So again, I'm gonna take my PVA glue and I'm gonna apply the PVA glue directly onto the jar because I think it's gonna make the job a little bit easier. These ropes are very kind of thin and fiddly and I'm gonna have to hold the jar up so it's gonna make the job a little bit easier. So I'm going to start with the first one. So I know for a fact that as my clay dries, it's going to shrink a little bit because this is air drying clay. Um, it contains water and obviously as it dries, the water evaporates 
and so it shrinks a little bit. These seams here are going to crack open and there's going to be little gaps once the clay is dry. So when that happens I'm going to take some multi-purpose filler or you could use any other like structure paste, gel medium, anything like that and I'm going to fill those gaps in once the clay is dry. And now to fix this gap here I'll take this rope and instead of cutting it edge to edge I kind of slide it over a little bit and I'm going to cut at an angle that they kind of overlap at the moment a little bit cut it at an angle get the excess out I find that this way I get a much more kind of precise and better fitting um, cut, you know, where the excess needs to go away. A little tip for you, if you're working with a vertical surface like this, so with a jar, and you find that your clay is a little bit heavier and, um, you know, you leave it to dry and then you look at it in like 10 minutes and the clay is starting to slide down your surface, which has happened to me before, um, grab a hair dryer, set it on a cool heat setting or a cool air setting and then give it a little dry for, I don't know, 5 minutes, 10 minutes so that the glue sets a little bit more. That's going to stop your clay from sliding down. Um, it's not great to do that to clay but, but unless you kind of fancy um, sitting here and holding it for 24 hours then you know you've got to do what you've got to do. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing on the bottom here. Right so I've applied both sides of the rope and then this is what the jar kind of looks like with the lid on it. So I think I'm now going to sit it kind of like so with the lid on it and I'm going to give it a go. Ah what did I do? Now I'm going to see if I can fit any of these ornaments onto the top. I haven't tested. I hadn't tested these out yet, so I've only used um, these two little fleur de lis so far. So let's see what they look like. Actually, oh, these are very nice. You know, I think they're going to look quite nice on here. Let's find Camille. What do you think? I think if we stick kind of, let's see, one here, another one, what should we do, every other one or every single one? Let's see, let's place them every other one and then let's have a look at these ones. Sorry guys, I'm not in the most talkative mood today, it's been a long day. <laughs> Hmm, this is difficult. Difficult. Let's just do one of these above every other um, decoupage picture. Let's not overcomplicate this because I don't really particularly want to stick anything on the bottom because there's not really that much space here. And if I end up putting one of these above every single one, then it's probably just going to look a little bit too top heavy considering we already have moulds on the lid and then nothing kind of on the bottom. So let's do that for now. Okay, this is where we are right now. So I've applied all four of my um, additional mould here at the top and what I want to do now is I want to take these 3D pearls, so basically just liquid pearls, um, you could do the exact same thing with contour liner um, as well but this is much cheaper um, I find personally, in fact I'm going to take this lid off to make it a little bit easier for me to work with this and then I'm going to add little lines here. I'm going to do in a dot, drag, dot, drag. And I'm going to do this in between each of my decoupaged pictures. Just like that. So kind of creating um, a separating divide. Hands a bit shaky today. 
I've gone around all of them and I feel like adding a little something something here to the um, end as well so I might do like a little drag and a dot drag and a dot kind of almost create like a frilly edge yeah, I think when we've gone around the whole thing, it's going to look nice. But again, the good thing about these is that they don't dry straight away. So these take a little while to dry. Um, so if you start doing something like this and you don't like the way that it looks, you can simply just take a cloth and wipe it away. I think it looks nice. I don't know what you guys think. Let me know. Ah, I think I smudged a little bit. Remember not to smudge anything. Maybe not, I don't see the smudge. <laughs> I don't see where I smudged it. I don't know, should we add a little bit of something, something here at the top? Okay, let's just add a dot above each one of the little dividers that we made to tie them together again. I think it all looks really nice together. Obviously, I always struggle to stop myself. Um, and I'm now really tempted to add some more liquid pearls over here on the lid but I'm going to actually stop myself and not do it because um, it's just going to be overkill I think so that's where we got so far and now I'm going to leave it to dry again overnight until tomorrow evening and by tomorrow afternoon um, all of the gaps that I talked about earlier will be visible so I'm going to take my multi-purpose filler you know just a filler for cracks in walls and I'm going to fill in the gaps just using a little brush and then we're going to move on to the last step of decorating a little bit of dry brushing, sealing and all of that and I'll see you guys in a bit. So here is the jar, all dry now. And I filled in the gaps. Let me see if I can find some. So there's a gap here. You can't really see them. And I also ended up adding a little rope over around here because um, the more I was looking at it, the more I felt like um, it was just missing something here at the top. So I added another rope just to kind of tie it all together. And so now we're going to go ahead and paint it all. So I'm going to set it here for now and I'm gonna get my paint out so again we're gonna need white we're gonna need some brown and yellow ochre maybe a little bit of green um, things are falling um, right so what I want to do is I want to dry brush all of these mold here and this rope at the top um, in a kind of similar shade to what you can see here. So like an earthy, brownish, greenish tone that you can see on the labels. So I'm going to try and create something that looks kind of similar. And then we're going to do the flowers later. So I'm going to grab some white first, as always. So I've got white. I'm going to add some yellow, green and yellow ochre. So these are once again daily art paints. Just gonna add a tiny bit and mix these together. And now I'm gonna add a tiny bit of black. I'm gonna put my black on the side so that because I always squeeze out too much. And also a little bit of brown again to the side. And then I can just pick them up with my spatula and add them as I need them. Now I think what we're missing is like a red tone, like a burnt sienna. I have some here. So I've got burnt sienna. I think I'm going to leave it here. I can't seem to work out the exact colour that we have here on the jar. So I'm just going to give up and work out what I've got. Okay, so I've got my stencil brush. Again, natural bristle brush. It's dry. And I pick up a little bit of paint, clean off the excess onto my plate, and then start brushing it on. Very light touch, light hand. I'm not trying to get the paint into every crease and crevice because that's what gives it dimension. 
So I'll go over these bits as well. Don't worry if you um, get paint on the glass, we're going to clean this up later. And now I'm going to keep going and go around the whole thing. Right, so I got a little bit carried away and I ended up painting the lid as well, um, doing the same thing to it. It's okay, we're still going to do something a little bit different to the leaves in a bit, but first I want to accentuate all of this just a little bit more. And so I'm going to add some black paint into the mix again, so that the black on our labels has something to bounce off of and make this mix a little bit more saturated. And so now I'm going to use an even lighter touch, kind of almost barely touching the very tops of the moulds. And once again I'm just going to go around the whole perimeter. where we are now. I've gone around the whole thing once again with this darker paint and now we're ready to move on to the lid. So once again I'm gonna pop it off and what I want to do is I want to do the leaves on my flowers um, like a slightly different shade of green, still faded um, but a slightly different shade of green and then I want to make the flowers, I don't know, either pink or maybe slightly yellowish, um, something like that. So I want the flowers on the lid to kind of look a little bit different from everything else. Right, so I'm once again going to add a tiny dash of green to here um, and so I'm going to take a little brush, this is not a natural bristle brush, this is just a um, acrylic brush. Again tiny little bit of paint and I brush the paint over the leaves, just over the very tops of the leaves. I'm not going into all of the creases, I'm not trying to kind of fully paint them, I'm just, I'm just trying to create a bit of a slight colour change. I've got to be honest with you guys, so the reason why I'm not so talkative right now is because I'm also listening to an audiobook, I'm uh, currently listening to all of the Harry Potter books, well I have been since like May, <laughs> I had quite a few audible um, credits built up so I exchanged them for Harry Potter books so I've been listening to them since like May um, while I create <laughs> and so I'm now on the final book so whenever I'm not talking I'm listening to the book in the background. So from here I have a question for you guys if you've made it this far in the video, please let me know. Um, what do you do when you create, when you craft? Do you have something going on? Do you watch something in the background? Do you have music? Do you listen to um, books? Or do you just have silence? What is it that you do when you craft or create? I want to know because I feel like that really tells a lot about the person, you know, what you like to do while you create, kind of how you get into that zone. I feel like it's like a, it's like a little glimpse into a person's um, special me time. <laughs> Let's get personal. Let me know if you don't mind. This is where we are currently. So I've applied all of the green onto the glass. So as you can see, I have a lot of paint here on the glass. All of that is going to need to be cleaned off and. Um, as much as I don't like to use cotton buds, we're actually going to have to use cotton buds to do that. For now, let's sort out the flowers. I don't know, should I make them multicoloured? Because on here, on these pictures, I have blue, I have kind of burgundy pinkish colours, we have red, we have yellow. So if we do three colours, so like blue, reddish pinkish, and then like a yellowy tone. So let me grab some paints. Okay, I've picked out mid-yellow, 
cyan blue and scarlet and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take oh, all of these paints I think they have like a retardant inside of them um, you know to stop to stop them from drying up and because like this color I don't think I've ever used this red before um, so since I haven't used it before all of the retardant has like floated to the top and so when I squeeze it out um, it's just clear liquid that comes out so just need to give it a good shake I guess so I'm going to squeeze a tiny bit of red into here, into this green into this beige green that we used earlier, same with blue that's a bit too much and then a little bit of this yellow and again I'm going to take my mixing stick and just swirl them around in all of this mixture that we have going on here and one by one I'm gonna kind of randomly add a few blue flowers here and there and then a couple of red ones as you can see whenever I mix colors together um, I don't really um, have a strategy behind it I just kind of go with the flow I see what works and what doesn't work and then I go from there most of you already know that I don't have any kind of um, fine art background <laughs> or you know any kind of knowledge in that field so all of this is very much self-taught and I base all of this more on my feelings <laughs> rather than theory behind it not that I couldn't look up the theory but I just can't be bothered to be honest this works for me <laughs> see so I mixed up all of these shades and then I tried them on and I realized that they didn't really work the way that I wanted them to work so I just um, started adding more on less and regulate it as I go okay I might regret this later but I feel like um, now that I've done the flowers, the leaves don't look saturated enough, so I feel like I need to add a little bit more green onto the leaves, like get in there a little bit more. And here we are again, so I've added more green onto the leaves and I actually quite like the way that they look, but I think we're going to end up adding some gold in the end anyway, so it's definitely going to tie the whole thing together. So now let's get this thing tidied up. So once again I'm going to get out my methylated spirit, I'm going to pour a little bit into this lid here, and then I have a few of these cotton buds so with little precision tips on them and I just dip my cotton bud in methylated spirit and I rub it on the glass and it just cleans all of that paint away all clean now so now before I go ahead and apply some gold wax over it because um, I just can't pass on an opportunity to use gold wax I'm going to seal this and as always I'm going to use heavy duty wood varnish by Polyvine. I'm going to take a smaller brush and I'm going to go ahead and do the mold first. So you're going to want to be quite careful when you do something like that because you don't want to apply varnish onto your glass because then again you're going to have to clean it um, especially with this varnish, this is matte varnish, um, so it's going to mattify your glass if you get it on. So I'm going to carefully brush some varnish over the tops of my moulds, and then once I've done the mould, I'm going to go around the actual body of the decoupage pieces. And now that I've gone around the mould, I'm going to take a larger brush, make my life easier, and apply a coat of this varnish over the decoupage parts. Okay, I've gone around the whole thing, so now I'm gonna leave it to dry, and I'll see you in a second to apply our wax. Alrighty, the varnish is all dry, so let's apply some wax. I'm gonna use this wax by Finnebar. This is Art Alchemy Metallic Vintage Gold Wax, 
and I'm simply going to dab my finger in the wax like so, pick up a little bit of wax and then gently glide my fingers across the top of the moulds and the liquid pearls and kind of all of the raised bits that we have actually applied. This wax is self-sealing so you don't need to seal it with anything over the top, just let it be for a little bit, um, like leave it to cure for about 24 hours or so and you'll be good to go. I absolutely love the way that this jar has turned out. I don't know what I'm going to put inside of it. Originally I thought tea bags, but I don't know if I should upgrade this to be my instant coffee container. <laughs> well, here we are. So this is the jar. This is the final result that we got. A little change happened to the lid after I finished filming all of the process. I actually filled this up with pasta <laughs> and set it in my kitchen for a few days and I kept looking at the way that I had done the flowers, you know, the colours and everything and something just didn't sit right with it so I took it back here and I mixed up a colour that was close to the first colour that we applied onto the mould here and I brushed it over on all of these flowers here on the lid and then went over them with gold wax again to make them fit in I guess better I don't know, it didn't sit right with me but again you guys know that I always do this, I start something then I keep coming back to it and changing it and who knows, I may even end up changing this whole thing um, again I don't know, <laughs> we'll see here is a little close-up of all of the decoupage pictures. So obviously, because we didn't mask the edges with anything, um, you can definitely feel them when you touch them. But when you're just looking at it without touching it, you can't really tell. You can't really see the edges that much because well, there's distractions kind of here on the sides and there, there isn't really that much space and they don't really kind of stick out too much. So yeah, there it is, and there is the lid. I think it fits in a bit better now. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Craft With Me, and I really hope that maybe this will inspire some of you guys to go ahead and decorate some jars in this kind of style, in this way, you know, where you um, just kind of decorate half of it and then maybe apply some moulds onto the lid if you have a glass lid. So something similar to this, I would love to see your guys' results. If you do make something like that, make sure that you tag me in your Instagram post or Facebook post. And again, just to remind you guys, my question of the day for all of you is what do you do when you are creating? Do you listen to something? Do you watch something? Do you just sit there in silence? How do you entertain yourself while you're creating? That is what I want to know. I hope that you had fun. As always, if you would like to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, anywhere like that, then be sure to check out the links in the description. I will link all of the products used in this video as well as the images that I used for this um, in the description as well. Don't forget to use the discount codes if you want to sign up for Digital Collage Club. They are amazing. I love their library. As always, lots of love from my house to yours. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all and I will see you in the next video. Bye!